Uh, Michael was born in May of 2013, and when he was two weeks old, we noticed that his skull wasn't shaping properly. He had a knob on the back here that wasn't flattening out, and we discovered that Michael had the sagittal closure, which is this one here, um, of craniosynostosis. Craniosynostosis is a abnormal condition where the skull bones in a young child have fused too fast. When Michael was diagnosed, uh, our primary care physician recommended Children's, said that Dr. Reisner and his team were the best and that if his child was going through what we were going through, this is the facility and the doctor he would use. Craniosynostosis is quite common. It occurs in about one in every 2,100 live births. Craniosynostosis can cause two problems. The first is a abnormality of the skull shape. And these are potentially not minor abnormalities, but severe deformities that cause huge disfigurement to the child throughout their life. That potentially the pressure inside the head can build up and cause severe developmental issues down the road. As a mother, you want to kiss your child's boo-boos and make them go away, and we couldn't make this one go away. Typically, for kids with significant sagittal synostosis, we recommend an operation. And um, typically, there are different ways to do these operations. The two primary questions are whether you want to do an open operation or endoscopic operation. The hardest part was, you know, we got to the hospital on the morning of the surgery and taking him to those double doors and letting him go to that nurse. That was the hardest part. That was an amazing feeling, seeing Dr. Reisner and him telling us that that he was okay and that they were finished and that they did the minimally evasive procedure. It was such good news. Recovery from surgery from craniosynostosis is surprisingly fast. Michael Decker was in the hospital for about two or three days. He was then seen for a follow-up two weeks after surgery. Even at the initial follow-up, one could tell a tremendous improvement in his head shape. It was now much more normal than what was the case previously. And as I followed him over the months, this improvement has continued. He was... Wonderfully oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he had the gauze and his head was wrapped up and, you know, he had a drainage tube. But he was okay. You know, he, he was kind of goo-goo and gaga. And, you know, he was a lot younger then. He was laughing, smiling. I mean, he was doing a lot better than I thought he was going to be doing at that time. Parents are, are uh, relatively surprised, I think, by how quickly their child recovers from, from these type of operations. His prognosis is excellent, not only because of his capacity to learn in the future and normal neurological examination, but also because of the obvious tremendous support that he's going to get from his mom and extended families. It's been 13 months since Michael's surgery, and he does everything a normal baby does. His favorite thing to do is to uh, uh, kick a ball around the yard or the, or the house. His primary care physician doesn't have any uh, concerns about his development, and neither do we.